Tomorrow, starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on ABC. Covering a span of history such as we are in this report, one can get sidetracked by the so-called glamour and mystery of espionage work or by the exotic qualities of some drugs. But what you can't lose sight of is what all of this would mean in terms of individual human beings. There would be deaths, there would be long-lasting and harmful effects. The best-known case is that of this man, Frank Olson, a chemist employed by the Army Chemical Corps, who in 1953 was slipped LSD unknowingly at a meeting with CIA officials. Shortly after that, Olson went into severe depression. He ended his life at this New York hotel by diving through a shaded closed window in his 10th floor room. Frank Olson was the first known fatality in the CIA's LSD program. Olson left behind a widow, Alice, and three children, but it would be years before they learned the real story of his death. Shortly after his suicide, Alice Olson was visited by Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, the man who had administered the drug, and by Robert Lashbrook, his deputy, who was the last person with Frank Olson the night of his death. It was probably to check me out and see uh, whether I was handling myself and handling the situation, whether I was hysterical. And I'm sure they left the house feeling ever so much better because I had been uh, gracious and hospitable to them so that I must have played right into their hand and made them feel fine. 23 years later, did you, how did you feel about that meeting? My anger was unbelievable at how I had been duped for this length of time and the anguish which was unnecessary. Anyone who knew during all of those years never told Alice Olson the real story of her husband's death. She would discover it by accident more than two decades later. In essence, it was a 22-year-long cover-up. Lyman Kirkpatrick was Inspector General of the CIA at the time of Frank Olson's death. But had not the Olson case occurred within the secret confines of the CIA, would not this case have been a prosecutable case? Perhaps manslaughter. Well, I would think very definitely prosecutable, and certainly from the point of view of the uh, of Mr. Olson, why it, it should probably have been actionable. Frank Olson's suicide slowed down the CIA's testing of LSD and other drugs, but only momentarily. The CIA was not the only government agency interested in the possibilities LSD and other drugs presented for mind control. The Army Chemical Corps first started working with the CIA and then branched off on its own. It too tested drugs on unwitting victims and a death would result. The case of this man, Harold Blower, a tennis pro, seen here with his daughter Elizabeth, is well known. In 1953, Blower was a private patient at the New York State Psychiatric Institute. He was given five injections of a mescaline derivative that was being tested secretly for the Army Chemical Corps. With the fifth injection, Harold Blower died. As with the Olson case, a 22-year cover-up followed, until finally the Army admitted the real details of Blower's death. Since the initial news stories of Harold Blower's death, close to 5,000 documents, previously classified, have been released by the Army and obtained by ABC News. They provide valuable insight into Army activities at the time of Blower's death and where the Army went from there with their own drug testing program. From a previously classified deposition of Dr. James Cattell, who administered the mescaline derivative, on the purpose of the drug testing, to produce symptoms similar to those that you see in schizophrenia, on how much the patient knew about all this. We didn't delineate all the possibilities of what might happen because then you contaminate your experiment. Cattell then relates that he never even knew what drug he had given Harold Blower because of the secrecy of the Army experiments. We didn't know whether it was dog piss. This was secret. This was a secret. We weren't in on it. We asked Blower's daughter Elizabeth for her reaction. What? How can anybody react to that? I mean, it is so far from, from what you'd expect from a human being, never mind a doctor, never mind a professional specialist who's supposed to care about people's minds. It's, it's unbelievable. A suit filed by Elizabeth Barrett against the Army Chemical Corps is now pending in federal court.
Other Army experiments continued on mental patients around the country. Work done at the Tulane Medical Center in New Orleans involved several drugs, hallucinogenics, and electrodes implanted in the brain. The chief researcher was Dr. Russell Monroe, now head of the psychiatry department at the University of Maryland. These are various progress reports written by Dr. Monroe and recently obtained by ABC News. From one of the progress reports, a report of a woman who had electrodes implanted in the brain and was then given LSD and other drugs. She became agitated, cried, lapsed into a trance-like state. felt as if she were about to have a convulsion, experienced waves of darkness and light, had bizarre sensations in her neck and legs, said somebody was trying to manipulate her body. At this point, Dr. Monroe wrote that the woman was obviously having paranoid ideas. As a, as a lay person, uh, uh, perhaps you can uh, enlighten me. What therapeutic effect would the type of experiment that I just described have on a patient? <coughs> well, the therapeutic effect would be indirect. Was this patient aware that she was being given LSD? Yes, I mean, they, they uh, were told that they would be given some medication uh, and they should have Specifically sort of LSD? Uh, well, we told them, uh, I don't think that they would have even known what LSD was then at the time. They were told that they were going to give, they would be given some medications which might make them feel worse. Dr. Monroe, what, what do you think the Army Chemical Corps was looking for in all of this testing? They were looking for an incapacitating agent, uh, an agent that would not harm the person permanently, but would incapacitate them temporarily. That seemed like a a humanistic way to, <laughs> to wage a war, if war is necessary. When James Thornwell was given LSD by Army intelligence in 1961, this time it was no experiment. This time, the express purpose was to peel back Thornwell's brain to bear any secret within it. This time, the Army had gone operational. Thornwell, as reported on ABC last January, was an Army private stationed in Orléans, France. Classified documents were missing from his unit. Thornwell became a suspect. His two-and-a-half-month interrogation included administration of sodium pentothal, hypnosis, isolation, and deprivation of sleep. Army documents obtained by ABC News refer to this interrogation as conventional. Despite this severe questioning, Army intelligence was getting nowhere with Thornwell, and it was decided to slip him LSD. For 16 years, Thornwell never knew what had hit him. Tell me about the acid. Uh, I'd rather not. It's, uh, it's a bad trip. It's a bad trip. That was a bad trip. The pain was so excruciating, felt like somebody was sticking me with a million pins. You know, just everywhere. Oh, it just... I walked around. You want to stop? Oh, I can talk. I lived through it. I lived through it. I lived through it. No charges were ever brought by the Army against Thornwell. He was discharged for psychological disorders. But an Army psychiatric evaluation of Thornwell obtained by ABC News, one which was done prior to Thornwell having been given LSD, says of him, fairly cooperative, oriented, alert, and gave no evidence of psychosis or depression. From the Army's point of view, this type of LSD interrogation was a success. Other documents refer to the exploitability of interrogation subjects, cracking them, keeping them off balance mentally, and providing an economical, speedy, and productive aid to interrogation. From James Thornwell's point of view, it was no success. Thornwell still has serious problems. He's run through two marriages, 
He maintains he can't hold a job, can't concentrate, has nightmares, and feels socially and emotionally isolated. Last fall, Thornwell filed suit against the government in federal court. In a moment, we will examine the closest experimentation to brainwashing that we have uncovered. Oh, for crying out loud. 